Welcome to the first chapter of Part C of the textbook on sustainability management. The entire Part C of the textbook is about different functional areas of uh, companies and how companies can become more sustainable in these different functional areas by means of various instruments, measures, and so on. And this first chapter here in this part um, covers the area of sustainability marketing. So what will you learn in this chapter? After reading this chapter, you will be able to first characterize what is specifically sustainability marketing. So what makes marketing sustainable, more and more sustainable? And you'll learn that sustainability marketing tries to overcome the often prevalent marketing myopia, um, which focuses very much on the price and on selling products uh, to consumers. Uh, and marketing uh, that is more sustainable tries to go beyond that narrow perspective and deliberately includes also social ecological aspects and considers the collective consequences of marketing activities and so on. You'll also be able to describe various forms of so-called product service systems. We also um, discussed this briefly in a chapter on sustainable consumption and we're going to go deeper into that aspect and you'll explain how these different types and forms of product service systems can help to overcome or actually improve sustainability and overcome the um, the limitations of traditional very product focused selling um, activities. You will learn that there are different product service systems, uh, basically three, um, and these are product oriented services, use oriented services and result oriented services. Um, which to different degrees combine products with services and these uh, systems can actually at least potentially improve eco-efficiency and also eco-effectiveness and ideally lead to lower resource use or lower emissions while at the same time offering consumer benefits other than just selling a mere product to the consumer. You'll be able to distinguish different elements of so-called total consumer or customer cost and describe to what extent they are relevant for sustainability marketing. You'll learn that there are different uh, types and components of total consumer cost. That is uh, the, the purchase price that you will well know. Then we also have transaction cost, use cost, and also post-use cost. And sustainability marketing should focus on all these different types of uh, and elements of cost ads. There might be specific advantages, but also disadvantages, drawbacks associated with more sustainable products compared to conventional products. Furthermore, you'll be able to illustrate some ethical issues in pricing policy, uh, especially those that are connected with uh, excessive pricing, price fixing, predatory pricing, and also uh, deceptive pricing. You'll be able to describe problems of unsustainable promotion policy. You'll learn that promotion can create artificial demands, lead to pervasive consumerism, materialism, uh, perpetuate undesirable social stereotypes, and can even be discriminatory or demeaning. You'll be able to distinguish different types of product level and firm level greenwashing. Greenwashing is uh, an act that is described as the, like, like misleading consumers uh, regarding sustainable practices. So companies uh, want the consumer to see themselves as the company as a whole or products as greener as they actually are. And this I like this is misleading practice that's called greenwashing and we have different types of greenwashing. We have seven product related types of uh, greenwashing and five firm level uh, types of greenwashing, so-called sins of greenwashing, which we'll discuss uh, in this chapter. You'll be able to explain how labels can then help to increase the trustworthiness, but you'll also be able to discuss limitations of label. You will learn that labels can potentially act as a signal to illustrate otherwise complex or uh, opaque facts, but very often it's difficult for consumers to distinguish stronger from maybe weaker labels, as there are uh, in many areas lots of different labels and it's sometimes difficult to compare them. And finally, you'll be able to discuss difficulties of product placement for sustainable products as um, there is, for example, high competition for sell shelf space uh, in, in, in stores, but there are different channels that actually specialize on sustainable products and we'll be discussing these uh, in the chapter.
As always, we have different features enriching our chapter here. We'll discuss uh, the article by Brown and Dustin from uh, 1997, that is on corporate associations, associations on quality and on corporate social responsibility. And we'll have a look at how consumers respond to these corporate associations with regard to the product. Then we have a very interesting phase of sustainability feature um, talking about Anita Roddick. She was the founder of Body Shop, the Body Shop, um, a company in the um, cosmetics industry that is and was well known, was and is well known for its sustainability approaches, a pioneer in that area. And Anita Roddick was one of these pioneer entrepreneurs of sustainability. We'll have a topic on and feature on sustainability in business called plastic or paper, how unclear communication can lead to accusations of greenwashing. We'll take a specific or a few specific examples and illustrate greenwashing, a specific type of greenwashing uh, in real life. And finally, we have an interesting uh, another topic of sustainability in business. That's a feature on uh, the zero waste movement and the interesting um, idea of package free shops. So shops where you can buy groceries and other kinds of things without um, packaging. So potentially using much less resources, uh, very interesting uh, business models in that regard. And that then covers the entire chapter on sustainability marketing. Have fun.